Hello all and welcome back to Bradical's channel. We are here with another N64 game review, and man is this another classic. Pokemon Snap is quite the unique adventure, and offers a different perspective than most other games in the franchise. Taking pictures as the main objective in a game could disinterest any 9 year old, but seeing that Pokemon were involved, you bet I was going to beg my parents to buy this for me. This game is purely one player, and essentially you are exempt from any competition, both human and NPC. There are no losers in this game, so if you are getting destroyed in red, blue, or yellow, or especially Pokemon Stadium, then the participation trophy style of Pokemon Snap will be perfect for you. In this video, I'll show you the basic overview of the game, which is essentially the entire game. Also, we'll learn how to impress your elders without any monetary compensation. So let's get to this. I'll be quick and make it snappy. Haha! <laughs> Our story begins with Todd Snap, a young photographer who enjoys capturing Pokemon, not in Pokeballs, but on his camera. Professor Oak hires this 10-year-old boy, man is this starting to sound familiar, to further his research by documenting and capturing on camera the different Pokemon that live on Pokemon Island. Todd, who I assume is altruistic, accepts this job and meets Professor Oak in the lab to begin his questionably short quest. As we can see here, Todd struggles to capture the elusive Pokemon on camera, but in the end, vengeance will be ours. Todd Snap is nobody's fool. Our first order of business is to completely throw out the name Todd. We are hereby able to name ourselves, but only in seven characters for some reason, so I am now Bradica. We are greeted by our taskmaster, Professor Oak, and like previous games, he sends a preteen boy out in the dangerous wilderness to document potentially hostile creatures. He also gives us a rail card without the use of manual brakes, a clear OSHA and DOT violation. He then sends us on our way to explore Pokemon Island. There are seven courses on Pokemon Island, each unlocked in succession. We have the beach. The tunnel, the volcano, the river, the cave, valley, and the secret rainbow cloud. Woo! The beginning content is about as basic as a video game can be. The rail car moves while you take pictures. Of course, use the joystick to rotate, use Z to zoom, and A to take a picture. You'll go through the course at a moderate speed. Take as many pictures as you can to hopefully submit some quality ones to Oak, otherwise he will express disappointment in your performance. Keep in mind the best shots can't be obtained until all items are unlocked, which we will explain later. Once you reach the goal gate, it is time to select your best pictures you want to send to Oak. The selection process is pretty straightforward. Oak is generally, and I use that term loosely, fair at judging and granting points to a good picture. You can only choose one picture of each Pokemon to judge, however, you can score extra points if other Pokemon of the same type are in the picture. Of course, choose pictures that are front angle, large, and center, much like a good picture in the real world. Most of the time, it's a judgment call to which picture you want to use, as the point totals to unlock items are fairly easy to obtain. After you have selected one Pokemon picture of each type you have captured, it is time to move on to Professor Oak's armchair photography criticism. Oak judges your pictures based on five categories, not all of which will apply to all photos. The first being special. This one is attributed to only certain situations, such as a balloon Pikachu or a rare picture of Mew. Basically, this is only for certain Pokemon scenarios that Oak particularly enjoys. I suggest finding an online guide for this one as it's very specific scenarios. The second is size. Pokemon in the picture shouldn't be too big or too small. This is evident by real world experience and is pretty self-explanatory. Third is pose. First things first, 
don't take pictures from behind. That's just common sense. Behind pictures will add to your total Pokemon count, but generally will grant you a horrible score. Also, you can try to make the Pokemon do something by throwing apples or pester balls at them, and will generally make them happy or aggravated. Apparently, morals and ethics go out the window when looking for extra points. Fourth is technique. Just make sure the Pokemon is in the center of your photo and Oak doubles your score. Easy money. Or in this case, points since it's free work. Last category is same Pokemon. This is generally a small bonus if you capture other Pokemon of the same type in the picture. I'll show you shortly my personal favorite picture in the game of multiple Charmanders doing a dance, which requires both apples and the Poke Flute. After all pictures have been graded, you'll be taken to your evaluation page where you can see your progress in Pokemon captured and total points. The points are a culmination of the best score of each Pokemon type, and items are awarded at different thresholds. Apple at 24,000, Pester Ball at 72,500, the Poke Flute at 130,000, but only after you receive the Dash Engine, which is awarded after you find the hidden path in the Valley Course. We'll take a look at these items in action in order to get the poses that Professor Oak desires for some weird reason. The apple usually is made to make Pokemon happy and create a trail for them to get closer to you. Or you can irritate the Pokemon by throwing directly at them. The Pester Ball can do a few different things. It's able to bring Pokemon out of hiding, such as this Porygon. No need to feel bad by invading its habitat, we needed this picture. This second Porygon we can also use to our own advantage by scaring the daylights out of him so we can jump on this conveniently placed button that will take us to the cave course. In this case, we can also use the Pester Ball to torture this poor Grimer, and he eventually becomes a muck. You just have to ignore his screams for help. The Pokey Flute is a fun way to capture Pokemon poses and unlock new Pokemon, as well as feel like the Pied Piper. Just be ready to be driven absolutely mad by these same three obnoxious jingles. You can continue the tradition of irritating and intruding on Pokemon by playing the Pokey Flute during Jigglypuff solo. As you can see, she is not at all amused, but we work for Oak, not Jigglypuff. And for the best shot of the game, you can use apples to make these Charmander call their friends. Once all of them are together, Play the flute and they will dance in unison, and it is absolutely adorable. A couple of my other favorite shots include the surfing Pikachu, use apples to lure the Pikachu to the surfboard in the beach level. And in the cave level, you can use a pester ball to hit the Zubat and balloon Pikachu will appear. In order to move on to Rainbow Cloud, Oak wants us to find signs which are better described as inanimate objects that are vaguely resembling Pokemon. Why they didn't just place these Pokemon in the game I'll never understand, as I would much rather take a picture of a living, breathing Pokemon than of a stupid rock I could do in everyday normal life. But in any case, here are the oh-so-mysterious signs. The beach level we have Kingler's Rock. Nothing particularly special about this, it's just on your left at the start of the level. Tunnel is Pinsir's Shadow. This is made possible by hatching the Zapdos egg with Pikachu's Thunderbolt by playing the Poke Flute. Volcano is Coughing Gas. Simply throw a Pester Ball in the first volcano on your left. River is a Cubone Rock. Play the Poke Flute to clear Vileplume's gas to get a clear shot of this. Cave is Mewtwo. Turn around as soon as you get to the Weeping Bell Pool, and you'll see the crystal formation. And Valley is Dugtrio Mountain, literally right in front of your face as you start the level. Easiest one there is. Rainbow Road, the Nyan Cat before Nyan Cat. This level is high in the sky, and the signs you collected were clues. They were constellations. And again, we torture poor Pokemon with a Pester Ball by hitting Mew Shield and breaking him out. Once he is loose, lay on the Dash Engine and hit his bare body with another Pester Ball to make him spin like a ballerina, and you'll get Professor Oak's blessings for all eternity. 
We end the game with Professor Oak giving us praise for our rare picture of Mew. He better be grateful as we travel to literal space to get this picture after scouring an entire island. This picture by default is worth at least 2500 points, so I'm fairly certain it's impossible not to receive praise by Oak, but I've seen stranger things happen. Once you have captured all 63 Pokemon on camera, Oak will invite you back to the lab and congratulate you on your accomplishments. He is clearly done with you and tells you he has nothing left to teach you, which means get off of my lawn, kid. Now is the perfect opportunity to award you with something, anything, but no, he sends you to a reset game. And that's our entire adventure of Pokemon Snap. Hello all and welcome back. Thank you again for reviewing my gameplay footage. Had a lot of fun playing Pokemon Snap. Overall, I rated it as a very good game. Uh, enjoyed the Pokemon that they did have in there. I enjoyed the course selection, good variety there. It's a good new perspe perspective on things. Uh, Todd Snap, having him in there instead of the usual Ash Catch we had in that area. Uh, also offers a good alternative to capturing and battling Pokemon. You got to kind of stay out of the competitive edge on that and kind of do your own single player thing. Uh, unfortunately, the complaints are are there. Uh, first one being the selection of Pokemon. As you saw in there, there was only 63 out of the original 151. That's, what, a 41% average. I wish there were more in there. I realize they're strapped for space sometimes, but uh, even some of my favorites weren't in there. You know, Blastoise and Venusaur was in there, and yes, I'm biased. I actually have the little plushie here, but yes, Nidoking, they didn't have anybody in the Nidoran family at all. Um, kind of disappointed with that. Very short game. It took me just a quick morning to play it, 100%. You see speedrunners doing it in less than half an hour. Uh, the content definitely wasn't there, but the content that was there was very, very fun. Overall, I'm going to give the game a 7 out of 10. Uh, if they had just a bit more content in there, I'd probably rate it even higher, obviously. That's my biggest complaint, is content. Um, hopefully in the future they have a sequel to this game. I would love to see a Pokemon Snap 2. That would be great. Nintendo, if you're listening to this, Pokemon Snap 2, I know you got the fan base for it, but... Until next time, guys, looking forward to the next video. Again, it'll be a surprise to both of us, because I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. Peace out.